What's up, everybody? Welcome to another week of the Friday Fuss. I appreciate you all for coming through. This week, I got another special guest joining us, popular YouTuber Lamont Tyson. He does a lot of, you know, reviews for movies, TV shows, as well as a lot of, you know, videos on health and life topics as well. And a real cool brother to speak with as well. And he's going to be joining us. So, without further ado, my brother Lamont, how What's you up? doing? I'm good, hey, brother. Hey, man, I heard this is the most fire place to be on Friday night other than my live show. So, I had to get here to see if I need to put out the fire. What's going on? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm glad to have you, man. I, I'm I another it. champ. I see you got the belts over there. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have to make a tag team belt up in here. You know hey, we saying? can be the black LOD. Since, since they hey. died and gone to heaven, we can be the black LOD from your neck of the woods, the Windy City. That's right. Hawk and Animal Reborn. That's what's up. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> man. I see we got a couple of people popped in real quick. Miss Shalina, I appreciate you. How you doing, sis? Um, thanks for stopping by. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm going to move this up a little bigger. I don't know why I did it like that. But Whitney, what's up, sis? You always come through as well as Nicole B. I appreciate you. Um, now, you know, on Fridays, I got a few things I like to talk about. Um, We're going to start it off, you know, what just recently happened with the Biden and Trump, uh, you know, they just had the virtual debate. And we know that, of course, Trump, I love the ratings, always get more ratings. I got the highest ratings. Fake news, bad ratings, low ratings. <laughs> so now we see that he got low ratings. What do you think that means? I know it probably don't mean much to the voters, maybe, but what do you think it may mean with him and how he may be feeling? Well, you guys are talking about a man who's a narcissist, whose very existence is based on the power of pleasure he gets from people liking him. And one thing that he did in the last election was he was a shock job. That's what he is. That's what Trump is simple and plain. He's a marketer, a shock job. He's faked it till he made it. And whenever he's mm -hmm. not getting the adulation from the crowd and the ratings just showed you, America's tired of hearing his lies. How many lies can you tell? How many plates can you spin before the shit falls on top of you and cracks and embarrass your white ass? So <laughs> the issue with him is simple as this. He didn't get the ratings because everybody knows he's gonna lie. You've seen the way he behaved in the first debate. You don't want to see that again. You want to hear someone who has answers and is science-based and is trying to take the country in a direction so that we can get rid of Corona. Now, Jay Moore, you tell me, did I see it wrong or what did you see from Trump being down in the ratings to Joe Biden? I mean, I think it's what you're saying. And also, people don't people know what is going to be said. There's no point, too. You know, and like he say about Corona or this or that, um, this dude gets the best medical treatment and drugs that nobody else has access to. And mm -hmm. so, you know, he he can play it like it's no big deal because he's going to have things that nobody else does. But all his followers are following him and they're going to die. You know, even Herman Cain rest in peace i'm not necessarily a supporter of his but i mean it's like a cult and i'm it watching is. something on hbo about a cult and this look like it talking about i know what you're talking you're talking about the vow on hbo i know exactly what you're yeah, talking about definitely and, and the, the thing is if you was to watch the vow the show that uh oh oh boy we're in trouble now <laughs> we 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 in trouble now, man. I had to come through a little CPT time. <laughs> right, Mo, right, what I tell right. you, J Mo, what I tell you, what what I tell you, J Mo, I told you, and CPT <laughs> does not mean Chicago Park. 
<laughs> That's the whole thing right. telling me. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I, I was getting clowned when I came in. I was like, right. "Oh damn!" I, I was like, "Man," mm -hmm. I was yeah, like, "I'm gonna by the time I get everything set up, I'm gonna be a little late. I'm gonna get, I'm about to get clowned." Look, man, and you right. got a real, you got a real comedian up here now. You are the boy. <laughs> you better tread lightly today. You, you better, you better tread lightly. So I you got to talk about the I know you got two watches. They need the one I'm working. I know, man. I know. It been stop working. Other one, the sun. You know, hey, Larry. You know what it is? It's this Apple Watch thing with the charge this thing like every twelve minutes, because otherwise it just dry, it just dies on you. And then this other one, some little budget joint I'm reviewing. So, you know. <laughs> hey, man, they say a dead. But that's how you your watch. That's all I mean. Right. Okay. For those that are watching, this was our other guest. I had two guests joining today. And this is Larry from Today I Feel Like YouTube channel. And he does a lot of product reviews as well. And Larry, I'll let you give an introduction for those that didn't see you. Yeah, yeah. My channel, I do mostly tech reviews and stuff. I talk about products and services. I review stuff like watches and, you know, and phones and cameras and whatever else. I do some cord cutting stuff on there as well, telling people how to get free TV and movies and stuff. I do all my stuff legal. So I get people asking me how to get bootleg this and that. I don't do the whole bootleg thing. So you're going to have to visit your local uh, barbershop and hit the DVD man for that. But... I just do yeah, all climb space. on the pole, climb <laughs> on the pole, hook up that cable. See, nah, man, don't do none of that. <laughs> no splicing stuff, none of that. Right. So, but you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff out there you can get for free if you just know where to look and what apps to get. So I do all legal stuff and show you how to get everything that you would normally get with a cable package, but for free. It's just a little bit more work when you're doing it that way. So, and for right. all the right. Jay Moore fans that love power. I must tell y'all, if y'all remember Ramona from season six, her, <laughs> her number one fan, I don't know if y'all ever remember that song Usher did about his superstar Ooh. fan. <laughs> Ramona superstar fan is this guy sitting next to me named Larry. He loved Ramona him. Some damn, he loved some big forehead. Ramona, he wanted to go slip and slide down her forehead. He loved nah. that one. Well, Ramona got a lot of fans over here too. So, oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, see, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm loving it. I'm loving. It. See, Jamo, Jamo's down with me with Ramona and with Killmonger. We're about to the planet and get the finest women. I'm telling man. you. Hey man, man ain't nothing wrong with Ramona now. Nah. Make a Mona if you let me now. Nah. Hey. You know? Hey, <laughs> hey, look, we started We started on my channel. We started calling her Ramona Pitatonia. That's what we call her on my oh. channel. Specifically for Larry. That's what we Ramona, came up with. Ramona's just mad because, because Professor Megram's don't do it. back out by Zeke. And then, and then you know, by the end of this season, Tariq's going to have gotten at that, too. He's just oh. mad because his Professor Megram is an is a, is a open door. Man, you stop! Know. What in the hell, man? What? She has an open door what? policy, as most professors do. It just her door is a little bit more open than others. What? I don't She's know if he's ready. To, I don't know if he's ready to go behind that green door yet, man. Oh, so he ain't ready for that. <laughs> see, see, see how y'all dirty, y'all dirty. First, Larry, right. like she, she's a politician talking about she got an open door policy. And then Jay Mo <laughs> want to talk about her stuff turning green because everybody, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. Feel yeah. Thirty three now. Nah, you you said so she was turning normal. green. You, you said she was turning green because everybody done got to turn in there. So I mean, look, uh, y'all uh, not gonna make me give up on Professor Megram. She is a highly educated black woman, and the really? only thing you gotta do is keep her away from Lock and Key. As long mm, as you keep Lock right. and Key, the panties don't get wet. They, I see I see in the comment section T said what T said dropped the super chat and said three men for the price of one. I'm telling you, we're gonna have a new show called Three Men and a Professor Megram. Oh, you know you need to do three men we not doing that and bring T up in here. I was gonna appreciate your time for that uh super chat as well. And I see a lot of you all uh Joyce and Whitney. <laughs>
everybody i appreciate you all for the uh, comments and uh one of the other things i wanted to talk about we was just talking about uh trumpy dumpty and uh i had the rating but you know we can move on for that everybody that is you know, tired of him but what about there's no, there's no, the Trump, 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 there's no Trump cult members in here are there i hope not they ain't gonna say <laughs> nothing <laughs> don't look like it don't look like <laughs> right <laughs> no we don't roll like that but what i was gonna say is about the u.s deficit now it's saying that it hit an all-time high of over three trillion mm. now how is this now if you do it in terms of percentage now we said that it's 15 percent right here and the last time that it was to that point was in world war ii so mm. we could possibly bounce back but does it look like it may be possible and should they have they're saying in this article that they should have spent more when we was going through that that second stimulus but that would have put more money in the deficit as well would that have helped what are jobs are jobs gonna come back what are y'all thoughts on that Larry, Larry, I'm gonna give the first part to you about the deficit. We've talked about it before, yeah. but I'll give that one to you and let me come back with the job part. Right. Sure. A lot of so, people is upset they didn't get unemployment extended as well. Right. Right. Uh, you know, part of my thing is I think with the deficit, part of the part of the whole problem I think with our economy is I know they keep saying the rich are getting richer, which they are, but part of the problem is too is that you have so much wealth that's just concentrated. Mm -hmm. It's not even that it's spread around with like a whole wealthy class. I mean, we're talking about a small group of men and women that have an enormous concentration of global wealth, and it's just sitting there, not really doing anything. Mm -hmm. You know. They're talking about the stock market right now is driven by retail investors out there that just are have nothing to do with every little bit of money they have because you let it sit in the bank. It's not earning anything. I mean, the interest rates are so low, you don't earn anything if it's sitting in the bank. In fact, you end up losing money because the rate of inflation is lower than, you know, is higher than the rate of return sitting in a savings account. So, you know. So you have the market that's driven by retail investors, all this concentration of wealth on the top that's not doing anything. And. I think if people look back at history when we've had financial troubles in the past, like for instance, when the, com when the company, company that I'd say the country, it's kind of like a company now, like a Trump company failing. But if you <laughs> if you look at back then, like when they had all, all the parents and all these dudes met up, all the 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 all the uh, masters of the universe met up over at Jekyll Island, they all decided they were gonna they were gonna use their wealth for the betterment of the country, and we haven't seen that. We're just not seeing that right now. We need, I mean, I know it sounds terrible to say we need the wealthy people to come and save us, but in some sense, we need them to actually use their wealth for the betterment of this country. And if they're not, the government needs to tax the holy shit out of them, excuse my French, needs to tax the holy crap out of them to pull some of that wealth back into the into where the people are. And, and, and reinvest, right. Because that trickle I mean, down it, economics is proven it doesn't work. No, nope. right. Trickle down does not work. Right. right. No. And so, and and so as far as, as, as right I hear, the new stimulus package, they're going to have to add more money. They're going to have to give more money to the average everyday person. Otherwise, you're going to start to see, eventually you'll see what you see in a lot of other countries where you just start to see actual, you know, civil unrest. Because eventually people will just say, well, if I can't afford it and I don't have any prospects of being able to afford it, I'll just take it. And if I can't have that, and there's never any prospect of me having that, then I'll just burn your crap down so you can't have it either. So eventually, they're going to have to make, they're going to, and that's part of the reason why America has been successful on some level. They have made it so even the, the average and below average income person feels like they have a path forward and feel like they can have stuff. So right. we may, you may go into a person's home in the hood that doesn't really make any money but they have a big screen tv so they can feel like they have a little something <laughs> and, and that's funny because they actually don't forget the air jordan yeah right. and air, but if they but if you get to a point where people don't feel like they have anything and they don't feel like they even have a pathway to have anything they'll mm -hmm. just start taking stuff or they'll start destroying other people's stuff so right you know so they get to right. the point of Lamont, what do you think about that 
Um, I think people need to understand what does it really mean to be in a deficit? How does a deficit help or hinder your way of life? You're here, pundits get up here and say that um, when you have an increase in the deficit, it just puts America back. It makes us put spending on the backs of our children. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay. Every time you hear a Republican get on his high horse about a deficit, usually what have they done? They've done a tax system where they pass a tax law that helps the very people who have the money to pay down the deficit keep their money. Like one came out right. today. There is this loophole for private jets. Now I told y'all I watch CNBC all day because I'm trading stocks and options all the time. There is a loophole where people who can afford a private jet and ride on a private jet would normally pay a 7% tax when they get on that private jet. That's supposed to expire with the PPP. First and foremost, if you're really serious about our deficit, that should have never been in there in the first place. If anybody can afford taxes that are reinvested for the greater good of this whole nation, it's anybody who can afford to get on a private jet. Well, they found a loophole so they can extend that through something called a badge over the next five years, which is going to be somewhere close to a billion dollars a year in revenue that could be spent to not only get rid of the deficit, but also invest in those people who are middle class and poor that are trying to get to the next level in business. If we were to ever get this quote unquote deficit balance, which we're not anytime soon, it is supposed to equal um, reduce bills in colleges. It's supposed to equal reduce inflation. It equals a lot of things that people have a hard time breaking down as to how does it put money in my pocket. And the reason why it's hard to do that is because Jay Moore mentioned it, trickle down economics. What this country does is it rewards those at the top in several ways with taxes. And when there are financial opportunities with low interest rates, you've got to damn near be, I'm not going to say rich, but you've got to damn near have 750 plus credit a history of being in business and all kinds of other stuff that the average Joe Blow doesn't have in order to get access to that capital. And that's the problem I see going on and the problem they are claiming would help with the deficit. But before we can even talk about the damn deficit, we've got to talk about creating the jobs, getting the next PPP cycle going so that people can continue to believe that they do have a chance to live the American dream, which right now is just simply being able to put food on the table with your family and be coronavirus free. That's where it's at right now. Right. Definitely. You know, Definitely. one of the things that Lamont was talking about with the with wealthy people wanting their tax cuts all the time, part of that is is that what most people probably don't realize is that for for rich people and for everyone else, there's two different worlds in taxes are the largest single expenditure for wealthy people for everybody else for almost everybody else it's their housing so mm -hmm. if you are making probably less than a couple million dollars for almost everybody else your housing is your largest single expenditure you're paying you know maybe two grand <clears throat> 2500 3500 1500 whatever you're paying a month towards a mortgage or rent your taxes, you may pay throughout the course of the year, you may pay, you know, seven, eight, 10, 12, 30, $40,000 in taxes. But for someone who's making several million dollars a year or someone who's making, you know, a billion dollars a year, you're talking about people who are now paying, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions or what could be hundreds of millions if you're someone like Jeff Bezos or something with, you know, with Amazon where you're paying where you're earning billions of dollars so for them but they didn't pay any you don't tax have to pay. remember they got the lawyers and accountants so they didn't pay any tax making some of them all that money some of them didn't, right some of them don't and Amazon some people didn't. what they're doing is because they know they can't avoid all their personal income tax a lot of them bury and hide a lot of their money within corporations right. and so like, what we need to do yeah. is get rid of some of these courts corporate tax breaks so that mm -hmm. corporations are taxed because there's no way in the world you should have a company like like Google or GE or or any of these Amazon. other major billion dollar global Fortune 500 companies not paying any taxes. No, that is absolute lunacy. And really, no. and, and in all honesty, because I've owned three or four different businesses that made six figures, if you really are trying to get people to jump class from poor middle class to the next class, 
you should have some kind of segregated tax break when you first start a business until that business reaches um, six figures in revenue where you don't pay any tax. Me and my wife right. own the child care center. We, we own the building. We um, did the daycare in one LLC and we did the property in another LLC and people would not believe how many taxes you're going to get smacked in the face with. You got FICA, you got the property tax, you got a license tax, you got your standard income tax you have to pay. And then right. not only as an employer, you have to match the, um, the FICA and all that stuff that you're paying on behalf of your employees when you haven't even made money. You live, right. You're living off of loans you had to get, which eventually comes out of your pocket. So this country right. is serious about helping people get to the next level. But More that's also part of the problem is over-regulation and over-taxing, which doesn't, you know, incentivize investing and incentivize people to want to create business because you got to pay all this money. Like they say, take money to make money, but sometimes it takes so much that it disincentivize somebody from even wanting to do it or like some of these rich people will say well i gotta go through all these regulations or go through all these loops and hurdles it take two three years to get this built they decide to either go and spend their money and invest other places for example like akon the rapper now he's in making a lot of investments and things in africa i don't know if you all are familiar with have you heard about that yeah, he's, he's like he's trying to go a hundred out there. Yeah, he's trying yeah, to yeah, he's trying the new city. Yeah, so yeah. for you guys watching that are not familiar, he's able to start a city brand new. So they're like solar powered. They're gonna all use like electronic, uh, you know, funds with phones. Like you know, but he's able to do it in like a year or two, which would take probably never here with the regulations and then he of course black and other things but um and like california everybody loves california and it's great to network and work with people but they are overtaxing everybody so much that a lot of people are leaving california because if you making a few million dollars you're going to be spending a couple hundred thousand and taxes and you feel like what am i getting for my money you know right. the police will look like the army which is a problem because they are well over well funded when people say you know defund the police or that's what it really means is not have them militarized you know right. everybody still need police because th nobody wants to live like the wild west nope. <laughs> you know <laughs> Even right. gun people like I got guns, but I don't want to have to defend myself like the Wild West. You right. Know? <laughs> nobody, crazy. nobody want to go walk ten paces, turn around and shoot. Right, <laughs> right. right. And, and, but it's you another know, thing. I'm gonna show, hold on, let me say this one thing, Larry, and I'm gonna get to you. It's another thing. Is though it's a problem. Is it's two sets of laws. We know when the police how they say you resist an arrest, and that's why you get shot seven times or a knee to the neck. We know that, right. but when we see others say no or resist they have conversations and talk right. about it and stuff, yeah, you know and, and then when they get stabbed or hurt they say well it's a dangerous job that's why we got to defend ourselves but then they use that on the people that don't have weapons unarmed right. and said they don't you know so larry go on and say what you want is was about to say and then i'm gonna show you guys a video and then we talk about that video yeah, I was going to say, you know, as far as the thing with Akon, the thing that's interesting about, um, you know, about what Akon's doing in Africa with, you know, building up this power grid. And I forgot what country he's in that he's doing that. But one of the problems with 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 building infrastructure in third world nations is that oftentimes in order to get the funds, you have these you have these corrupt politicians or dictators that need the funds and so they end up having to go to the world bank or to the imf and part of the and and the strings they attach on there they'll say okay we're gonna give you the money to build uh uh you know a power grid in your country but it's gonna have to be built by by ge or it's gonna have to be built by some french company or something it's china and, it, and, it did it and not, it only this, not only do you have to contract with this country to uh this company to build your grid out and all of your power stations and everything, but you also have to contract them with them for the next fifty to a hundred years to do all the maintenance on this on this uh, power grid. So now you have this 
this small country who couldn't really barely afford anything that took out all these loans to get this power grid and now they're locked into this onerous contract with this european or american company mm -hmm. to go and, and and maintain their grid and they do it at astronomical rates so that the people can never get up on from underneath these loans and so what happens is they have to borrow more money from the imf or the world bank so that they can pay to have those that power grid uh you know maintained and what happens is basically you end up where people are upset you have dictators that that are sucking in all kinds of money from the from the like they may get 50 billion dollars from the imf and 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 all of a sudden there's an administrative fee of like 12 percent or something that comes right off there and that's going right into the pockets of the of the dictator and his and his corrupt politicians that work with him and so you end up with these countries that never get out from under anything and mm -hmm. and, the, and it becomes so expensive for them to have even just basic stuff like power they can't even have power 24 hours a day they have brownouts for you know three or four hours a day or they have rolling brownouts where certain sections of the city are down solar, every day can they do that with solar power with solar power it's different i think if they did that with solar power and they had the ability to you know to have the power stored i think that would be different but that's part of the problem most of these companies don't want that type of mm -hmm. of technology there because nope. it cuts them out of the process.